Got it. Okay. Excellent. All right, James. Well, uh, thanks for your time today, first of all. Yeah, and, thanks for um, having me. So, you know, your last album was, I think, September of 2021, right? A yes. series of mostly nothing. So since then, um, I, the most recent thing you've done is a single, um, Lovely. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little about that song? And is it part of, you know, an EP or an album or a larger project you have in the works? For sure. Um, so Lovely was just kind of like, a, it, it started off as like a demo, essentially. Um, I, so I, I, lately like the way i've been like doing my recording and stuff is um my guitarist jesse morvan who also plays in modern ties uh black tie stereo in the area um he has been like working with me kind of as like my producer for the last like year or so and we'll like start by like demoing a song with him and then i may like end up recording other parts with other people but he's gotten so good that i went into that session uh trying to just show him like the song i have an idea for and it turns out that we expanded it so much and it started sounding just like so good and like professionally done that we just like we should just like release this song in general. Oh, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Important. Yeah. Uh, so for everyone watching, uh, I am at Commonwealth Coffee House in, in Scranton because uh, I have three dogs and they're oh, loud. Yeah. So uh, like it truly <laughs> like I was like, I need to go out somewhere in public or else I'm never going to be able to do this because my dogs will never leave me alone. I appreciate um, it. <laughs> yeah. So Lovely essentially was just like, it kind of just came out of nowhere. And I don't think it's going to be a part of a record. I think it's kind of going to be like its own thing, like a, a standoff single. But it was more just kind of like an experiment to see how um, how it all, you know, like doing a different sound would work. And just like, it was just kind of like a fun project. And we ended up liking the song so much. And I think it's going to, definitely influence a lot of the songs we do going forward um but like it was just like a good way to branch in you know i feel like to that type of uh sound yeah um i wanted to talk a little about the live situation you know sure. um, you yeah. got some shows coming up you're going to be playing in new york at one of my favorite new york venues rockwood music yeah. hall um just kind of a great place i just spoke yesterday yeah. with uh andrew mcmahon and he's doing his album release show there, oh wow is, holy shit yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty cool um so yeah all kinds of people have played there over the years it's a uh -huh. great venue if anyone gets down there um yeah. i wanted to ask kind of how you approach i mean you've been playing in the scram looks bay area for yeah. a, a while you know and yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming that at your shows a good chunk of those people are people you know either friends or people that maybe you don't know that well but they know you because yeah, they come yeah. to see you so is there a different kind of mindset when you're going to play a show like that let's say i know you show, yeah. show at the v spot you're going to look out and you're going to say that's this person that's that person. for sure or maybe you go somewhere at rockwood you don't know how many people are going to show up for your set mm -hmm. there's a bunch of other bands playing that day it's yeah. a different city is it just a different mindset for you yeah it definitely is but i don't know if i would say it's like uh i, I kind of like it because i feel like sometimes i have more pressure playing for people i know mm. than pl playing for like people i don't know so like i feel like if i go to the rockwood music hall and there's a couple people i know there but a lot of it are like strangers i think i would feel more relaxed because it's mm -hmm. like that pressure i give myself to be like don't let down people that i love um is gone because it's like all these people that i don't know and i think it honestly helps and then usually i end up having like my best shows in other areas mm. um and like I, uh, I feel as though, <laughs> I feel as though I, uh, when I go to um, a, a place out of city, you know, out of Scranton, like I, I let go of that that insecurity to play in front of people I know, and it just becomes more natural, and I tend to have like my best shows there, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess maybe there's less to less to lose it's kind of like you're yeah up, if it doesn't I, I, go I, well you could just kind of slink off and go for back sure home. like like when i play like my release show i look out and it's like holy shit this is everyone i've ever met ever in one nice. room you know and then if i go to rockwood it's gonna be like okay like these are a couple of my friends from new york and then a bunch of people i don't know yeah. like this is not nearly as stressful as as like you know my relatives and my childhood friends who i haven't yeah. seen in forever and yeah. all all these other random people so right. um it definitely uh I, that's why I enjoy playing elsewhere, and I, I take uh, those shows even more seriously than the ones in Scranton sometimes because, like, that's my chance to reach a new audience. Versus, like, in Scranton, I could I could play, and I'll I'll definitely still meet new people, and um, 
you know, I could play in front of people that have never seen me before, but like 95% of the people there have seen me, you yeah. know, versus in New York, it's a whole new crowd. So it's like, I try very hard to, to really do well on my out of Scranton shows because it just, yeah. you know, it's a more important crowd to win yeah. over, I guess not more important, but just like, to me, it's like, it's important to win other people over. Yeah. After you play a show like that, um, say it's Philly or New York, Boston, whatever. Um, is there ways to measure if you've won people over, not just their like visceral reaction, but like yeah. ways you could see certain streams or if you could say, Oh, all of a sudden there's 10 new followers. Yeah, from yeah New York. for sure. Literally just like that. So mm -hmm. um, we just, I just played in Bethlehem like two weeks ago and I did an acoustic show in Bethlehem and uh, leading up to it, like, I didn't really know what to expect because I was like, okay, I'm playing solo and I'm not playing in my band. Um, I haven't played in the Lehigh Valley area in so long, um, but I knew my friend Bren was playing. So I knew it would be a good show, um, but I truly didn't expect how good of a show it would have been. So I, I just played like a, a half hour acoustic set and I think I got like 10 to 15 new followers that night on Instagram. I got new Twitter followers. I had new followers on Spotify. My streaming went up that week. So it's just like it shows how much just like one show that goes well can like impact, you know, just yeah. everything. Uh, and I feel like it sounds like I always tell people like, like five followers for one show, 10 followers for one show is actually awesome. Cause it's like, it's 10 new people to potentially listen. And if they listen and they show their friends, it just grows and grows and grows. And I, I think like, every single person that listens to my music or goes to my shows or just becomes a fan or anything is so important. Um, and it's bigger than just like, you know, myself, it's like every individual person brings so much to the table and a chance for new people to listen to it. And, um, so yeah, I think like after those shows, if I talk to a lot of people and everyone's super kind or like I sell some merch and, you know, even more so than just the way the crowd reacts, it's like kind of how it goes afterwards. And like the, the friendships I make following each individual show, yeah. I feel like that's how I, I, uh, scale if something was beneficial or not to me. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I wanted to uh, ask about, you know, looking ahead to August, I think mm -hmm. it is. Good things yes. are happening. will be oh, yeah. happening again. So yeah, good, good things are about... still happening. Yes. Yeah, tell us about the last <laughs> one, which I think was the first yeah. one, right? And, yes. And what yes. to expect this year. Um, okay, so the last one was last August, and it, it all started as uh, a tweet. I, I literally just put on Twitter, and I also put on Facebook my idea that, it would be cool to have a music festival in Scranton and not to take away from like there's a uh, camp uh, punk Sylvania. My friend Kyle Johnson does that. And there's a bunch of other uh, other things that go on in um, Scranton that are really cool. And I don't want to like take away from the fact that they all do that too. I just kind of had an idea that like, it'd be cool to do something in Scranton, bring other bands from out of the area, get some art vendors, uh, some food trucks and just make it like uh, the whole point of it to like showcase how, how cool this area can be, you know, and how um when you do something positive for the area, like how much it truly impacts like everyone around you. And like, uh, so we did that event short notice, like two months of planning. It was pretty stressful. Cause I was like, I can't believe I'm going to do this, you know, but the response from my, my posts were just so uh for it that I was like, I'm just going to try. So we did it. Um, and it went super well at the Iron Furnaces. So this year we're going to do it again. We're going to hopefully announce like the lineup pretty soon. Uh, I'm really excited about all the bands we have so far. It's 11 bands. Um, we have some from Jersey, some bands from like outside of Pennsylvania. Uh, we have some local bands as well. Uh, I can say like, yeah, uh, Estacota is going to be playing, which is sick. So I'm glad to have them on, on board and everything. But yeah, it's August 12th this year. We're trying to just like, make it better every single year so that in like five years year five it's like it just sells itself you know like yeah we just announce it and everybody knows what it is and people want to go and uh we can get bigger and bigger bands every single year so it just yeah it started off as just like a kind of like a silly idea that now has become like a dominant part of my life which is just crazy yeah um but it's really cool i i, I really love it and I'm i'm excited to do this year again you're at a really cool location too, the uh, Scranton Iron, Iron Furnaces. furnaces. Yeah. Why don't you kind of try to describe uh, that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Iron Furnaces is like just this beautiful hidden gem of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Like there's so many other hidden gems in this area. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, like it's like these four uh, blast furnaces from like the 1800s and like this big green field like right next to them. Um, so it's like an historic site and like it's just it kind of just like uh, – like really shows what Scranton is with like the coal and like, you know, making iron and all that stuff. It's just, it's very true to like uh, the roots of our area, which I think is kind of cool um, to kind of just like uh, do something modern at a place that was like used almost, you know, 200 years ago, uh, like having the music festival there. Uh, but yeah, the, the location is beautiful and I, I want to keep it there as long as we possibly can. Um, I think that if the festival grows into something bigger, like I plan to, it probably will have to, eventually move spots because it's just not suitable for like more than like, I think like the cap they can have there is around like 2000 people. Mm -hmm. So uh, between all the art vendors and, you know, food trucks and bands, merchandise stands, like we already get a lot of space like filled up just from all that stuff alone. So um, yeah, the venue itself is great though. And it was God, you know, willing, we have good weather. It's perfect. And it makes for a beautiful yeah. day. You know, but yeah. of course, like from now until August, I'm just going to keep telling myself it's not going to rain. <laughs> yeah. um, I know the only time I was there for anything, it was raining. Now that I think about it, it was, yeah. uh, huh, I was still living in Scranton and I forget what the event even was, but it was, yeah. um, it was really cool. And uh, yeah. I remember that uh, Charles Rivera was playing, I think, or he was there. I remember he yeah. was there and I remember his dog. I mean, he was there with his wife and his dog. It's the really, yeah. Random thing I can remember. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, w I wanted to have it uh, like dogs be allowed this year. Mm. I don't know if they're gonna like, go for it, just because there's probably gonna be dogs like going in the bathroom all over the place yeah. and like <laughs> and just people walking around. I don't want somebody stepping in, in dog shit and then right. spending the rest of the day at a music festival. Um, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, no, it's a cool spot and there's so much potential there. I, I really would like to see it be utilized for more than just my festival. They do like a big bonfire every year, but. Um, I think they're going to try to do more shows this year. Like, I think it should just be mm. an outdoor music venue that they use for certain things, you cool. know, like to me, there's no reason why like, you know, Tiger's Jaw or the Men's Zingers or any of those big Scranton bands couldn't do a show there in the summer and have it be like a, an amazing success. Yeah. There's no reason not to. And there, yeah. if you think about it, there, you know, if you want to play an outdoor show in Scranton, like an actual venue, it's probably montage and who, who's going to play, you know, unless who's going to sell 50,000 tickets or however. Many yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. Um, so uh, a band that played last on uh, last year's festival was Captain We're Sinking. And it got me yes. thinking about, you know, so many of these bands that came from Northeast PA from that underground or post punk, whatever you want to call yeah, it, Cafe Metropolis sure. world, whatever. Yes. Um, you've had you, some of them, you know, they're kind of legends. You know, I live in, in New York sure. and I didn't realize how big these bands were. And then like coworkers would be like, oh, do you know Tiger Shot? Like stuff like yeah, that. And yeah. It's like, yeah, they're, so anyway, they're, yeah. It's yeah, crazy. You've I, been. I, part of that now like this <laughs> next wave those guys are probably yeah. a little bit older than you i would uh, yeah. yeah um they're all about like i would say 10 to 15 years older than okay I. so I'm, that's I'm pretty 25 yeah. yeah i'm 25 uh, i'll be 26 in may i think like i think the men singers are in their early 30s um i feel like they're all like around that age like early 30s yeah. uh i feel like ben from tiger shaw is like 30 years old i could be wrong they could yeah. all be older um but yeah, no, they're all, they're all very supportive. And for the, you know, for the most part the times I've been able to like either share a stage with them right. or uh, do anything with them, it's, it's been nothing but uh, just like, uh, I've never, I've, I felt very uh, included, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like Ben, Ben from Tiger's Jaw is, uh, he's always been super supportive and very helpful and kind to like everything I do. Um, same with Adam, uh, from you know who used to be in Tiger's Jaw, yeah, Springs, uh, yeah, no, yeah. Wicked Face Springs Eternal. Yeah, I yeah. love Adam, and he's he's been a big help too. Um, so yeah, it's cool because like when I was in high school, um, those were like you know early, late middle school, early high school. Like those were all my favorite bands growing up. Tiger's Jaw, Menzingers. Like I think the first time I saw the Menzingers, I was in fifth grade, and I saw them at the Vintage Theater, like the OG Vintage Theater on Wyoming Ave, yeah, which is like now the Ritz Theater in yeah. Scranton. Um. So like I've been seeing these bands for so long. So when I finally got to play with them in 2017, it was like a very surreal moment in my life. Um, and I still like, no matter how many times I could play with Menzinger, it's like I still geek out and I have to tell myself like they're they're normal people from Scranton, <laughs> you know, yeah. like normal people that have a really good band that's just doing right. well. Um, so I try to always remind myself to like take a step back 
when you know I'm dealing with all that. But it's it's easy to like geek out when you're I'm like, wow, I was in tenth grade in study hall listening to Captain We're Sinking, and now they're playing my my festival, you know. Yeah. So but that was that was you know with, at least with Captain Bob uh, Barnett became like a substitute at Abington. So I remember like I'd I'd be listening to Captain, and one day I walked into my study hall and he was my substitute. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I'm literally listening to your band right now. <laughs> like, wow. this is insane." And that's how we became buddies. Uh, but that was in like 2014 or something like that. Yeah. So, it's been quite some time. That's really cool. Um, yeah. One thing about I think most of the bands from that scene is they um, they eventually left. Mm -hmm. You know, either they they maybe they needed to leave for non musical reasons to go to mm -hmm. college or this or that. But um, I wanted to ask like knowing that like how does knowing that impact yeah, maybe your so path forward and, and I, any challenges you face yeah, staying there I, you know i i feel as though my whole philosophy and i don't i don't um i don't think leaving is a bad thing like if anybody that leaves i don't i don't blame them for leaving i think that a problem this area has is too many people leave and then like they don't like the lack of opportunities or something they have here so they go elsewhere and I could do that, but for me, I've always just seen like uh, a chance to get all of those things happening here, which was what the festival was all right. about. Um, I, for one, like I, I've kind of come to the terms that if all goes to plan, like and everything works out the way I think it is, I'm gonna stay here and just continue to try to make this area better for other people. So, like, I, I wouldn't want to move to Philly. I feel like my my bandmates are here. Everyone's here. Uh, my family's here. My friends are here. So like my goal is to just continue to do what I'm doing tour as soon as I get my van operating to, you know, uh, it's a good level. Um, and then just continue to work on how we can make Scranton uh, more uh, welcoming to artists and, you know, musicians, bands, all, all that. Um, so I feel like that's my long-term goal is to continue to just, uh, work on the area that i'm in yeah um not to dwell on the negative but um in order to make things you know you're, you're working on things because they need to be worked on right so yes. i mean you know uh not only bands have left but venues have have closed 100%. down and you know yes. I, I mentioned cafe metropolis very briefly yeah. i was people only there should, for one show yeah one people show should I look saw up there. look up the history there of who's played there oh, yeah looks better it's crazy. just a, Crazy. Gritty, grungy venue. The sound was horrible, yeah. and it was just it didn't matter, you know. <laughs> the Gaslight had them played there. Yeah, it was amazing. Gaslight Coheed, there Coheed and Cambria, together. Coheed and Cambria yeah. played there, like just weird. Um, yeah. And then you know some of the others you could roll down the list with uh, Test Pattern across from the Bog. Yeah. And you mentioned the Vintage Theater, gone. Yeah. Um, there was like a glimmer of hope for a few years in Wilkesbury with Carl Hall. Yeah, yeah. Now that's gone too. Yeah. So you know that's. Well, I, the question I'm I'm trying to get at, I guess, is yeah, like when there's no when there's not places to play, like where do you play? Yeah, and <laughs> when there's only a few places to play left, you do you have to like watch that you don't like over overdo it? Yes, take every 100%. gig that there is, and then people get sick of yes, it. <laughs> yes. So that is something I'm trying to resolve. Um, I have an idea in mind for a place in Scranton, but I, I won't say it on this just because like it's not my business. So I right. can't like say, I think this place should be doing shows. There's a place that I have in mind in Scranton that I think would be perfect. And it's in downtown Scranton. Uh, and if they started doing shows there, it would be, it, it would solve the problem. It has a stage. Um, it can, you know, it's right in the downtown area. So it's not like on the outskirts. Like I love the V spot. I'm very excited to play the V spot. But the V spot is still not in downtown Scranton. Is that an it's elephant like, or where is it? Is it? No, it's like, right. It's in like, like kind of like near like west side so it's like well, is, not, it by, like, is it out by stalters it's by like the glider diner and like, yeah the stalters the bars field. right there and then yeah, the big yeah. football stadiums across the street yeah i was yes. in there once for the uh yeah. the awards thing the electricity yeah yeah music. yeah okay. so yeah, I've been in there, that yeah. place is definitely over the last several years like uh changed into something like it's become more of a venue first than a bar yeah um, and i think it, so i'm really excited to have my band play there because we've never played there before um but again i want something in the city of Scranton, not even Wilkes-Barre. Nah, I think Wilkes-Barre needs something too, but I think Scranton itself needs something downtown yeah, that yeah. like people who live downtown can just walk and be like, okay, I'm going to go to the show. I'm going to walk down right. and I'm going to go, I'm going to see a show and I'm going to walk back home and it's, it's going to be perfect, you know? So like 
there needs to be something like that. And that is like, seriously, like my biggest goal um, is to get something like my, my dream someday is to have a venue, you know, yeah. um, I don't want to own a venue, but I want right. to have a, I want to have a place that people can play at. Um, not even just for myself, but for like other bands. Cause like, I would be going to shows all the time if there was shows happening all the time. But unfortunately, like, they're in Oliphant, they're in Wilkes-Barre, they're out of, you know, not far, but it's just not in downtown. It's not it's in like, downtown, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's definitely tough because you know, there's a lot of places that have dipped, but where Tinks used to be, they're renovating that entire building. Mm. Um, so uh, they're, I have faith that John Vasilika, who like bought that entire building, which was like Levels, Tinks, it was uh, Mulligans maybe at one point. It was a whole bunch of different things. Um, yeah. But I think they, they might try to have like a venue in there as well. Oh, There's cool. also the, the Leonard Theater, which I mean, I've kind of, I'm just, as soon as I have millions of dollars, I'd like to someday try to run the Leonard Theater in Scranton. But that's like a historic 120 something year old theater that just like sits on Adam's Ave and it has like a 1200 cap ballroom upstairs. What's the one? That's not the, what's the one next to the bog? That one. That's the one. So yes. somebody tried to do something a few years ago, like for like a year. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. And I yeah. think it was like so, Live Nation supposed to get involved, but like um, that was always a, the thing. Like I'd hang out yeah. at the bog and those, a lot of the guys that worked there, um, the, the great, you know, my my great friend, yeah. Brian Craig, who's yeah. you know no longer with us, but like Bill Orner and all these guys, they had all these connections to bring bands in, but nowhere big yeah. enough to put them, you know? Yeah. And, like, yeah. and that's door, right I'm there. Like, right. That wall down, I know. You know? So essentially that building needs like at least like probably $2 million worth of like renovations. Mm, okay. Have you been help. in there? Have you seen yeah, what it's like? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's absolutely beautiful, but it, it also like looks like shit at certain times because it has been neglected for a hundred years, but yeah. um, it needs an elevator or two, which off uh-huh. the bat is like at least a million dollars or more. Um, and then it needs just like a bunch of stuff. Like the building just needs to be like renovated. So yeah. I had an idea that I thought Scranton should take over the building and make it a historical location, kind of like the Iron Furnaces, so that it becomes yeah. protected. And then yeah, and they'd get like, like tax breaks and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and they get and federal funding. Like to, if you or me yeah. owned it, and every week we're worried that it's going to go to yeah. business. Yeah, <laughs> versus like you, you, you just appoint somebody to be in charge. Yeah, and it's like it's like a uh, they work for the government essentially. I don't know. You yeah, know, so I, I I have lots of ideas with that, but that that place needs a ton of work. Um, yeah. So, I do have faith that like I I've wanted that place since 2014 when I first saw that it was purchased and it was supposed to become a Live Nation venue, and since then I've witnessed you know nothing happened there and like yeah. just constantly just feels like a uh, a dead end road, but um, I think that someday something's going to work out and when that day comes i will be the first person to like knock on the door and say let me be involved i hope it does because it's just a reminder like every time i go to the bog i was just yeah you know, no it, what could be happening in yeah there, what you know? what could yeah it's just it's just a reminder of like what could be yeah you know or what could happen if we just you know truly i don't know focused on on like the art and music aspect of this of this city but yeah um so that's that is what I, I think Scranton has come a long way in the last couple of years in terms of just like getting better as a place to live, uh, more things to do and just like more of a younger uh, group of people living here that want to do things that want to see. Yeah, life. you sense it. Like if you go into the coffee shops, you're in one. Yeah. You go yeah. to Northern Lights, you go, you walk, you go to mm-hmm. the bog. Um, it's I still sense it in, in a good way. It makes me feel really old. And I guess that's probably good yeah. because, you know. And it's like, I go to the bog and I don't know anybody there. I'm like, well, that's probably good for their business because if it was yeah. all people my age there, we're, you know, eventually yeah. a lot well, of Well, dude, the bog is changing disappear. big time. Like now you go to the bog on a Friday night, it's like all university kids. Yeah, which is so like, that's, why, I, that's why yeah. I'll stay out of there. But yeah, it's funny. Like, I want yeah, to I I <laughs> go to the bog so bad and, and like, I don't want to be upset that they're like killing it. Yeah. I'm like, it's I just want to hang out in peace, but it's good for them. And I need. I, I need want that place to stay open. So no, they're... They're doing great. I'm actually playing there for Parade Day this weekend. I saw that. It's really cool. Yeah, which Parade is going to be fun. Um, um, I wanted to yeah. ask, because yeah. why don't I, <laughs> I'm thinking, why don't I ask about a place that's actually open and exists? And I know you've played a lot. And speaking of beautiful buildings um, with history is the yes. Scranton Cultural Center. Yeah, Masonic Temple. And um, yeah. just tell me a little bit about the shows you've done there and kind of what they've been doing with, I know they have yeah. like an original music thing going there. So 
<laughs> if they see this, I you know what? I hope they see that I'm complaining about them because maybe they'll 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 start listening to me. Um, the Culture Center is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful building. Um, it's got multiple rooms. It's got the big ballroom downstairs that can hold like twelve to fifteen hundred people. I think that's where the men's areas do their holiday show. And then it has Shoplin Hall on the fourth floor, which can hold about five hundred people. Um, so essentially, the Culture Center is magnificent. Uh, it's a beautiful spot. It has all the space. It has, you know, street parking, which is not a big deal. Um, and it's got everything you need. It's just very expensive to rent out. Right. And it's a pain to set anything up. So, like, I want them to, uh, I don't know. I want to I be affiliated with there so I can, like, help set up these shows. But, like, we did a show there in January. And, like, by the time you pay, you have to hire an outside sound crew. You have to pay for security. You have to pay for... Uh, people downstairs working like there's all these fees that go into these yeah. contracts that you do there um so that by, unless you're bringing at least 300 people the bands will not make much money at all so how so much were you like, charging for tickets to try to th- that's know? the thing it's like you have to charge like between tw- 15 to 25 and then people are going to say i'm not paying that to see a local band you have and to then, see three local where and and yeah. then you know or you can pay 25 dollars and go to my festival and see 11 bands you know so right. it's tricky it's it's tough because i do think that tickets are going to continue to go up no matter where you play because bands need money and everything is expensive but at the same time um you can't charge that much money for just three bands at a three local bands at, at a place like that but unless you do that you're you literally can't have the show yeah so I that is the thing I'm trying to overcome with the culture center. Uh, I think it's a beautiful spot and I love doing shows there. It's like my favorite place to play. Yeah. Um, it needs to be easier and more uh, friendly towards like local bands. Cause like, unless, like I said, unless you're bringing 250 to 300 people, like you're really not going to make any money. You could also lose money, you know, by the right, by the sure. you, you pay. Yeah, for and people don't realize that too. And like people either don't know or don't care. It's like, well, I don't care yeah. if you have to rent a sound, you know, or they don't know. Like I didn't know that. I assumed yeah. that they yeah. were putting on this thing and no, inviting people yeah. like you to perform. No, um, so it's I, yeah. yeah. And it, I, sorry, I was just gonna say I reach out. When I want to yeah. play there, I reach out and then okay. I set up the show essentially. So it's like my own doing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. people don't, you know, the, the, all the back stuff that goes. That's why I think sometimes these interviews are hopefully interesting to people because they're like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought this guy just showed up, took out his guitar, played, took some money. No, home, dude, those like... shows require so much planning and yeah. so much work. And then I hang flyers up all over Scranton and try to right. get people to come. And then people get mad at me for hanging flyers up all over the place. Right. And... Yeah. It's, kinda... <laughs> dude, I remember yeah. years ago, um, there was, you know, I used to complain. I mean, I always, I mean, it's just, I'm a human, so I complain about everything, but yeah. I used to complain about the cultural center. I was living there. I was working for uh, the weekender newspaper there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this email came through that Wilco was coming to the Scranton mm-hmm. cultural center. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had these couches in the office and I had to lay down because, and everyone's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, Wilco's Wilco. coming. From Scr- and yeah. people that knew me were like, oh, wow. And other people like, I don't know, care. I don't know what that is. Yeah. And it sold out. That's crazy. And they never yeah. came back. And mm-hmm. Jeff Tweedy yelled at someone in the audience. I think he called them a douchebag because they were on their phone. Because that's you know it's what Jeff Tweedy does. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the next night, apparently, he said how bad the crowd was in Scranton, like when he was playing. So I'm like, they never came back. That wasn't a Live Nation show for any. It was yeah. AEG, which is like yeah. almost Live Nation, right? Yeah. And right around that time, the Black Crows came and played on the seated side. That was a cool yeah. show. Uh, Ray Davies from the Kinks came. Yeah. yeah. All this stuff was happening. I went to again with Brian Craig. Um, we went to see Megadeth. Yeah. Oh my God. We Megadeth. went to see Megadeth at the Scranton Cultural Center. And we, <laughs> we, I remember we went downstairs to the bar and I said like yeah. three Miller lights, please, or whatever. And the woman yeah. said like $6. And I remember saying to her, could you please charge us more? Because yeah, if yeah, it's that yeah. cheap, we're going to run into some problems here tonight. And I yeah. remember near the end of the show, Brian's <laughs> like, well, they're out of beer. So I'm going back to the park. I'm like, well, I'll see you back there. But, and then that never came out. So like, I, I think what I'm getting at in a rambling way is a lot of things in the Scranton area, they, um, there's like these glimmers, like, oh, it's happening. It's finally happening. Wilco's coming. Then, not, not that Megadeth know. was some up and coming band. They had no, one original Me- member. Megadeth, yeah. it's still Megadeth, all the metalheads yeah. there. And then it just doesn't happen again. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's like, um, like I know. Tease, it's it's you know? a tease. Yeah. And I, I, I felt that my entire life growing up here. Cause I think I really was on, I missed that. I really like when I first started going to shows is when all that stopped. Yeah. Like I only went to one show at the cafe Metro and it was uh strike anywhere. 
and title fight. And wow. I was 12 years old. Right. It's the only show I ever saw there. And then they closed soon after. You know, I missed Tinks. I missed like all these places that were doing shows at the time. So when I first started, it was Eleanor Rigby's. But that ended up. Yeah. Closing. That's another um, one I almost had to lay down on the couch because the whole yeah. study was coming there. Yeah, the, and the, I had the two friends coming from there, Philly. You know? We were up and like, it was like the whole study's playing here. Yeah, so like that's the thing. And like when those shows happen, people lose their mind. They're like, "Oh my god, this band's playing. It's great!" Like we all have to go. Right. And I think that is something that I've been like screaming for so long that it's like this is the genre of music that needs to be focused on. You know, here it needs to be bands like that bands that like people genuinely give a shit about which i feel like a lot of times people like don't think like oh like the indie punk bands the rock bands and that stuff like the bands that are going to pull well in scranton but like those are the bands that will sell out places in scranton you know yeah. so i feel like i have a lot of issues with like not issues but i feel like now ever so much it's like the bands that we get are bands that like no one really knows. Or like one hit wonder bands or like stuff like that, where it's like, we have so much more potential to sell more tickets to the demand that people. Yeah. I think sometimes the industry, like the promoters and even when yeah. it needs to be record stores, I don't think they um, give their, give the audience enough credit, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I do know there's challenges. Like I talk to people that work at the arena, like for example, dropkick Murphy's are coming to the arena. And I asked my friend that, really? uh, uh, yeah, they're next week. Uh, read the interview on highway to one revisited, but um, really? they're, yeah, wait, they're yeah. going to Mohegan sun. Yeah, they're playing Mohegan Sun Arena, um, and it's their St. Patrick's Day tour. And it's it's um, you know, I asked my friend that works there, do they get any yeah. radio support in this area? And he's like, no. And it's you know, Dropkick Murphys are not an yeah. underground band. They're not on yeah. the radio. The list I had no bands, idea they were playing. They have, they have, no idea. The, the list of bands that have never played the area, and part of it is radio still matters. And mm -hmm. thing I always I talk about is if you have like a WXPN or like Seattle has yeah. KXP, one of these like public stations, but you let yes. real music people run it, all of a sudden yes. it's uh whatever scranton whatever yeah. presents yes. so and so at the yes. iron front yes. and then now but yes. that infrastructure isn't there and another thing i always bitch and moan about and yeah. i think i'm right about this is i always feel that in an area like northeastern pennsylvania the people that have the ideas and the insight to make things happen mm -hmm. and the people that have the money and connections to make it happen are two different yes. sets of people dude 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 <laughs> you just said everything i've ever like it's I have all the right ideas. I don't have the money. And then people that have the money don't care for my ideas. And when they so do, they, like, when they're going to book it, yeah. they're going to put the same people on the committee they've always had. And it's going to be this yeah. tribute band that maybe is just fine, but it's, it's not it, what it we just want. happens. And it yeah. probably happens everywhere. But the only perspective I have is New York City, Scranton, Wilkesbury. It maybe happens in Sheboygan, Wisconsin or yeah. whatever. But like other towns, like I spend a lot of time in Woodstock and they have a radio station and I know it's Woodstock. They have the history. They have a leg yeah, up for sure. But they have yeah. more venues than. Yeah. And it's so and so presents and it sells out and it's Radio Woodstock yeah. and they'll bring in, you know, major, um, yeah. major, yeah. not major like Bono major, but like people everyone has kind of heard of. And I just there's, it's like if someone had a lot of money and just said, just here, take my money. Yeah. Or 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 if somebody with the ideas actually had the money, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, going off on a ton of tangents. Yeah, no, here. dude, no, I, I get um, it. Like I literally, my whole thing always has been: I have good ideas, I don't have the money to uh, fall through on all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I need, um, I need, I need three million dollars, and I can do a lot. Yeah, and it's, I mean, and, and when you have the universe, and I think things are too like splintered. So like, mm -hmm. even if you look at Wilkesbury, right? Like Wilkesbury for years has been trying to make itself a college town. But when yeah. you have two really small colleges, it's yeah. and then everyone goes home for the weekends because they're from New Jersey. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you can't sustain that. Like it's sustained no. like a couple bars, right? And but it's no, like, and I think somehow I, I, there was some way for these things to come together. Like Scranton University has a presence. I was gonna and, say, I think Scranton you know, is really uh doing more, you know, like um I feel like they've been like it's become more of like a college town. Like you go out on a weekend on, on Friday, Saturday night, it's all college kids everywhere. Yeah. You know? So I think it's it's a good thing, honestly. As much as like people don't want to be like, oh, college, all these college kids everywhere. It's like they're the ones that are bringing people from yeah. other and places. If not them, then who? Then who was yeah. who would yeah. be going out and someone's money, gotta do it. You know, you know. You know? So I, I think that's like that's the big thing is like you have to also just like accept that with change, you know, with like with good things like no no pun intended, or I guess pun intended, but with good things that can happen in the area, like it's going to be change and it's going to be right. like young people, new people coming in. So people are always bitching about like, 
all the apartment buildings coming to Scranton, like all the renovations of these buildings and yeah. apartments. And it's like, dude, I don't really care because like that brings more people here. And if, if not, if they're not going to be apartment buildings, they're going to be vacant. So it's either you have a vacant building that is beautiful um, and just sits there or somebody buys it and puts some new apartments in there and it brings new people into the area. And yeah. Like, and that's money. Those, yeah. that, those residents would be spending somewhere else or they, mm -hmm. you know, um, so um very glad we had this discussion and got some of these things both of us yeah. off our chat. Um yeah. circling back to to you, um, what is the rest of the next few months looking like for you? Um, literally just I gotta plan my festival. I gotta I've been recording a bunch. Um I've been working on another record for like literally since the last one came out. Um so it's already been like a year and a half. And I have made a lot of progress, but not enough that I feel like I'm close to where I need to be. But um, essentially, I just left the label I was on. I did like a lot of like kind of like restructuring of like who I'm working with and all that stuff. So I think um, I'm just going to continue to work on my record, continue to work on the festival, play some shows in the meantime. I'm not going to go like crazy with shows this year, I don't think, but I... Uh, I, I need to definitely play out. I need to do like an acoustic tour at some point this year. I have a ton of things I have to do, but yeah. my main focus is the music festival and the next record. So yeah. cool. those are like my, my two big uh, things I'm working on, which like I usually, I, re I start, I record stuff like every Thursday, every Wednesday or Thursday night. And then I, I think I need to do like at some point in the summer, just like a week straight, like at an Airbnb somewhere where I can just like focus and not yeah. have any distractions or anything, you yeah. know? Yeah, makes sense. All right, but, James. Uh, th thanks again for for doing this. Yeah, and, hey, uh, dude, thank you. I'm, this is it's nice to talk to you too. I think we only talked on the phone like one time in our lives. Maybe I think so. Many yeah. years ago, like yeah. 2019 or something. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I was going through the old stuff today just to yeah. refresh my memory and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's good to to make the connection. Yeah. And um, yeah, um, I hope well, to. I, uh, yeah, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I, I appreciate you wanting to talk. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Thank you. See you. All right. See you. Oh,